We're going to go back now to some applications in chapter four. Um, we're going to start with um, some talk about minimization. And this is quite an important technique in linear algebra. We're going to talk about a couple of different ways of looking at it. Uh, but let's just start with a simple example. Um, suppose I just asked you to minimize a quadratic function of a single real variable. Um, well, the picture is, this is a parabola, and I'm asking you to find this point, where it takes on the minimum value. And I'm going to go back and do this kind of example in a minute, but um, let's talk about a generalization, would be minimizing a function of two real variables. Um, for example, something like this. And uh, the graph of um, such a thing looks like a, a, a surface. And similarly, we'd be minimizing this function of two real variables, would be finding the bottom of the bowl. And this is a very important kind of problem which comes up in linear algebra. Uh, it doesn't exactly look like linear algebra because I'm talking about quadratic functions. But in fact, uh, this is kind of thing which we can treat using techniques of linear algebra. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so let's go back to the one variable quadratic equation example. f of x is equal to ax squared plus uh, 2bx plus c. And um, the attentive viewer will notice that I snuck a 2 in here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, that's just a convention B or 2B. I could make a joke here, but I won't. And um, this is a convention that the book is using. I don't really like it, but read to avoid conflicting with the terminology in the book on page 185, I'll follow this. And if you were to um, minimize, the question is to minimize this, which is to find the x such that um, f of x is as small as possible. And uh, I know you're all eager to fire up your calculus, so if you were to do this using calculus, um, you would take the derivative and compute that to be 2ax plus 2b. You'd set that equal to 0, and you'd conclude that x is equal to minus b over a. And, well, there's a little bit more to say here, but um, this is a linear algebra course, not a calculus course. So instead, we're going to do this in a different way. We're going to do this just by um, algebra, which is, in fact, more elementary and better in a lot of ways. And we're going to do it by completing the square. Now, I, all, I know you all remember how to do this, so um, I'll just uh, remind you that um, the way you complete the square is you write this as a times x plus some constant squared uh, plus some other constant. And what these turn out to be is b over a here and ac minus b squared over a here, and uh, um, I'll just make a little side note here. Um, some of you might be more familiar with b over 2a, but that's because of this choice of 2 right here. So um, anyway, this is, uh, this is how you complete the square, and the point is that there's no linear term here. There's, a, there's an x squared term. And there's a constant term, that's the x squared term and the constant term, but uh, there's no, no analog of this linear term. And now how do you minimize uh, this function? Uh, since I've gotten rid of the linear term, it's quite easy. Uh, well, the first thing it, that you notice is um, if it's going to have a minimum, you'd better have that a is bigger than zero. 
because if not, if a is less than zero, then it's an upside down parabola and it goes down to minus infinity, so it has no minimum. And um, if it, uh, so assuming that a is uh, bigger than zero, it's clear that the, the minimum is that x is equal to minus b over a because that's the only place x appears and the uh, smallest you can make this is by making uh, this term equal to zero and the value um, of the function at that point is this other thing ac minus b squared over a um, okay so let's look at the n variable generalization of this um, suppose I had a function f of n variables x1 through xn. And um, it had a quadratic term, um, summation k i j x i x j. And then also uh, some linear terms. And I'm going to mostly follow the book here and write the linear terms as minus 2 um, summation uh, b i x i plus a constant term. And these sums are, of course, over i and j running from 1 to n. Okay. And the problem is to minimize this. So find... Uh, these numbers x1 through xn such that um, f of that point is as small as possible. And um, the first thing I'm going to assume is that uh, kij is equal to k excuse me, is equal to k j i. That these, these coefficients here um, have the symmetry property. And um, that's, that's okay. Um, you can always um, achieve this by a change of variables. Um, it's, this, is, this is essentially no loss of generality. And then you'll notice that um, there's kind of a nice interpretation of this. Um, you can write this equation as x transpose k x. That's the first term, um, where k is this matrix of kijs. And x, of course, is this, um, this vector x1 through xn. And uh, this is just a, a, a shorthand way of writing this equation. And there's also a linear term, of course, um, which I'll write, which, which is just simply 2x times this vector b where, of course, b is the vector of bi's, and then there's a constant term plus c at the end. And this is the equation that we're trying to uh, minimize. And, uh, of course, you all recognize that what this is is the inner product of x with itself uh, with respect to this symmetric matrix K. Okay, let's, um, let's stare at this XX term for a moment. Um, suppose that um, there was some X for which this XX term was less than zero. Well, then, if you just take uh, any scalar c, you'd get that cx uh, paired with itself 
is uh, c squared times x x and this is a negative number and this is a positive number and as c gets bigger and bigger this is going to infinity and since you've got a negative number here this can go to minus infinity and so there's clearly no minimum um, so what did we see um, if there's a vector where this this thing is negative then um, f has no minimum f of x has no minimum now what does this mean this thing has some vector um, which is this this is negative for some x well that's the case exactly when this um, this um, inner product is not positive uh, what it's not positive semi definite so the semi uh, word here is a little bit tricky um, this number is allowed to be zero so um, anyway that's the condition and the well the the, the clear the simplest case is when um, uh, is, is when k is positive definite if k is positive definite uh, then um, th this f of x has a unique uh, minimum uh, minimum value and uh, I'll write that x star so let's just think about this for a moment um, I said if there are any negative vectors you're lost and well let's so there could be some zero vectors but never mind that suppose the forms positive definite uh, I'm claiming that it has a unique minimum and and, and this exactly uh, corresponds to in, in the one variable case um, this this thing a f is a x squared plus b x plus c the condition is that a has to be positive that has become uh, this condition has become this it's the analog in greater than one variable um, and so why why is that and how do you how do you find it um, how do you find x star well you obviously have to complete the square so what do i mean by that so uh, let me write down the function again f of x is equal to x transpose k x um, uh, minus minus two x transpose b uh, plus the constant c and what do i mean complete the square in this setting well well let's uh, remind ourselves in the one variable case where i had f of x is equal to ax squared plus uh, 2bx plus c, um, I set um, x star, the, the minimizing value, um, is equal to minus uh, b over a. Um, so what's the analog here? Um, I have a vector x star that I'm looking for. And what's the analog of minus b over a? Well, let's see. b is a vector. 
and uh, um, let me let me draw the analogy here. B is being replaced by this vector B, and A is corresponding to this matrix K. So it looks to me um, like the analog is well one over a is like k inverse so um, somehow it looks like maybe x star should be k inverse b and that's correct now there's a little bit of book slate of hand which again I don't really like but I don't want to diverge too much which is um, we changed the sign here. Um, we have this minus sign, whereas before we had a plus. So uh, that accounts for the, the fact that there's a minus sign here, but not here. And so let's just think about this for a second. So B is a vector, and K inverse is a new vector, and that's X star. And K inverse, um, let's be careful. Does K inverse exist? Well. Uh, yes, because um, K is um, positive definite, and so that implies that K inverse um, exists. So that's okay. And, uh, and then let's go about completing the square. Well, it's very much analogous to the, um, to the uh, one variable case, and what you get is um, f of x is equal to x transpose k x minus 2 x transpose and now you substitute b is equal to k x star and then plus c and now you've got a k here and a k here and um, if you just do a little bit of rearranging I'll, I'll skip the details but what you get is um, x minus x star uh, k times x minus x star Um, and there's a transpose on this one, and um, and then you get a constant term, which turns out to be plus c minus x star transpose k. Oops, x star. All right, so let's pause for a second and, and see what I've said. So uh, here's the expression I'm looking at. Um, I'm saying that that's equal to this expression right here. And, well, so there's a, a x transpose k x term, and then there's various other terms here, and um, including... Uh, these this minus two x transpose uh, b, and then here's the constant term, and then there's this last term that's left over. So um, I suggest that you pause the video here and you just write expand this out, um, uh, expand and and show that it's um, equal to to this thing. Um, okay. And when you're done with that, go on to the next slide. Okay, so here's uh, the, the formula for f of x. And because this term here um, is of the form vector k, vector transpose k vector, uh, this thing right here is um, clearly greater than or equal to 0. And the only way it can be 0 is if x equals x star. And that's the minimum. So the minimum is when x is equal to x star, which I'll remind you is k inverse applied to b. And that's, that's what I was trying to show.
um, that that proves um, that there there is a unique minimum. This is provided k is positive definite. And it's given by um, x star is equal to k inverse applied to b. Okay. Uh, let me just conclude with um, the positive semi-definite case. Uh, um, suppose k is positive semi definite. Um, assume this, but not positive definite, so the previous case doesn't apply. Um, what could happen? Well, k inverse doesn't exist. And um, since k inverse doesn't exist, you can't exactly set x star is equal to k inverse b. That doesn't make sense. On the other hand, um, you could try and solve this equation. k x star is equal to b. I'll put the arrows in here. Um, even though k is not invertible, this might have a solution. Well, it does if, um, if b is is in the range of k. So for example if b was 0 this would always be the case and in that case exactly the same thing works. Well almost exactly the same thing works. Um, uh, if that holds then um, choose x star satisfying uh, k x star is equal to b and then that gives a minimum um, but it's not unique because the um, solution to this equation isn't necessarily isn't unique in this case and uh, um, I'll leave it to you as uh, something you should think about and we could talk about it in class um, how many solutions does this have? What's the dimension of um, the the space of minimums? Space of minima. And um, if not, then there's no minimum. No minimum. And I'll talk about that in class. See you tomorrow.